Hello everybody, welcome back to our brand new episode of a NASCAR Heat 5 career mode here on the channel with this 2023 mod. I hope you all are having a great day. Today we are headed to race number two, kicking off the West Coast Swing with the Auto Club Speedway here in California. We just arranged a contract option for next season already with a current team of Colleague Racing, so they are already an option. Riley Herbst picked up the win in the last episode in the Daytona 500. We have some news including him and another big thing as well, but the news is Riley Herbst is going full time uh, with that Rick Ware number 15. He's not going to make the playoffs however because it's unrealistic to expect that team to be in the top 30 in the points but that team with the win was able to acquire funding uh, to have Riley Herbst in that car for the rest of the season to get him some more cup experience as we showed up in Auto Club. Big news though a brand new team has shown up here this weekend for the first cup series start with Justin Allgaier behind the wheel. I don't know if you guys remember but three friends racing. Do you guys remember hearing about that team? Well, they are here, finally, okay, in the Cup bye. Series, making their Cup Series debut with All Guy are here today. We'll see how they do now as we kick off our practice session at this two-mile uh, D-shaped oval here in Auto Club Fontana, California. Now, as we were getting, of course, some practice under our belt, getting acclimated again with this track, it's only been like, a, I don't know, two months since I've driven here, but, you know, still, uh, gotta get some practice under our belt here to make sure we're confident with the car and the track. Of course, not having the most pace in this car. There goes Joey Logano up my inside there for a nice pass down into turn three, but overall uh, I was expecting probably a mid-twenties kind of pace here this weekend uh, as we would wrap up practice pretty quickly. I only ran two laps and focused immediately on qualifying on Saturday. That's what we're going to jump into now is qualifying on this Let's Saturday go. afternoon here. And now as we were ready to roll, the goal was a 40.225. I was pretty confident that we weren't going to be able to beat that goal, unfortunately, right, as we start our qualifying lap now. We're going to stay on board down through turn one all the way through the lap, hopefully here, if it's a good one now as we head into the corner. 206 on the speed board, not rea uh, realistic. It's barely mid 180. But I'm going to go way up the track on the exit of turn two. We're actually going to catch the outside wall. And that immediately destroys our lap. So there goes that. We're going to start dead last for the second uh, race in a row. And both of our Cup Series starts so far will be from the back in 40th place. So not ideal. Uh, but we'll check out the rest of the qualifying order. Riley Herbst, the Daytona 500 winner in 39th place. Now you will notice Justin Allgaier's number is 84. It's replacing the Jimmy Johnson car. I'm not going to bother changing the number very often because that car is going to be switching uh, as part-time cars a lot. Kurt Busch uh, in the mid-teens there in the 67, but on the front row, Ross Chastain as well as Christopher Bell. Denny Hamlin, Byron Harvick, the top five rookie. Ty Gibbs up there as well. Uh, shout out to him as, as well. You got Reddick in his second race with 23-11 racing in the 45 and P7. Larson, Brad Kozlowski, and Blaney, the rest of the top 10. Truck Series racing this weekend here in Vegas. Chase Purdy picked up the victory. Once again, keep in mind for both trucks in Xfinity, complete disregard the car numbers beside the name but you can see the rest of the order there on the Xfinity side of things we actually would see Justin Allgaier pick up the victory and he was just getting ready to do the cup race on Sunday of course uh, in three friends racing debut in the cup series where they actually have a decent qualifying effort so now it's time to focus in on Sunday let's go cup racing and kick off the West Coast swing happy Sunday NASCAR fans we're in Fontana California for some two-mile racing on this d-shaped oval we saw Rick Ware's Riley Herbst win in Daytona last week. Riley was able to pick up Sonny D to sponsor a whole season effort after his big victory. What a storyline that is, Mike and Clint. It's awesome to see Chris, a kid that hasn't ever won a race in the top three divisions, comes out and wins the Daytona 500. Yeah, a great deal for Riley and for the rest of his season. Also, today we've got a brand new team making their uh, debut. Three Friends Racing, which is a German-based team. Let's see what them boys got for us today. Alright, you got the pre-show. Now we're ready to go racing in Auto Club here in Fontana, California. You see the stories of the race. Martin Truex Jr., he's starting at the back after crashing during qualifying. Uh, as well, we have a little bit of pre-race conversation. Alright, so uh, what's uh, the goal today? I'd say top 25 for our car would be good. Don't hit any more walls either. 
All right, there you heard it. Ty Gibbs as well has been dominant all weekend. There's a poll winner of Ross the Boss Chastain, of course. Now a two-time Cup Series winner uh, coming into this 2023 season. Riley Herbst, well, he picked up his first career win. A rookie in the Cup Series in Rick Ware Racing. Well, they won the 2022 Daytona 500 with the mod we did. And now they've won the 2023 one as well with the new career mode. We are underway here from Auto Club Speedway. Now 50 laps here. It's, of course, 25% of the real-life race. Martin Truex Jr. We're going to keep a close eye on that Bass Pro Shops Toyota Camry driver. Well, today, to see if he can work his way from the back to the front. But on top of that, we're going to be watching him throughout the whole season because he is, of course, a name of interest when it comes to the 2024 season, which will be season two of this NASCAR Heat 5 career mode because we don't necessarily know what the situation is for Truex. Now, originally in the uh, first career mode playthrough that we were doing with the next gen mod with the 2022 version truex was going to retire at the end of the season uh however this time we're not sure we're basically going to base it off of where he's or how he's doing at about the halfway point of the season if he's won a couple races he's probably going to stick around for maybe one more season tops um if he's having a decent season but just you know he's not going in, in winning races i would say it's probably going to be the end uh of his career following this 2023 season season so stay tuned uh, on that basically mid-season when we get to about race you know i would say 17 or so 17 18 uh that's when we are going to basically hear a decision uh, on martin Truex jr's future now as you can see myself three wide between uh chris busher who's had a terrible start to this race uh the 500 winner of riley herbs back here as well my part-time teammate of chandler smith back in the car today you're gonna see uh aj omendinger in that car as well colleague racing uh, maybe looking at as well almost a Project 91 kind of deal here soon, but we'll wait and see what's going on with that. There's been some team talks, uh, so we'll kind of provide some updates as they become available here now as I'm going to the outside of the 51 of JJ Yaley. Now, I have Jeff Gordon as my spotter with this NASCAR Heat 5 next-gen career mode, and oh my goodness, he was getting on my nerves. It's got that weird uh, spotter noise where before he talks and when he stops, a little like radio transmission coming through, and I don't know what it was but for some reason it was getting on my nerves uh in this race but we continue on moving forward p35 after starting last place and as you guys know i'm, I'm not going to try and shove it down your throat but we're in this four star car uh so it's not going to be an easy race in auto club it wasn't easy last time we did it in the 2022 uh version and it's not going to be any easier any harder hopefully uh today here now as you can see myself passing the 62 of austin hill who's in this race again now i'm looking at options to get some more part-time cars made so we can have like drivers like the 62 not be in every race and, and whatnot um and right now i'm using jimmy johnson's car as kind of the replacement for that you'll only like i said last episode see jimmy uh, in a handful of races and other races there'll be different cars placed over top of his 84 basically like today with three friends racing and justin allgaier who's having a top 20 run right now uh, as you can see myself losing a position right there to the 47 of ricky senhouse jr now as we head down the back stretch so i was actually okay with him passing me because then i could kind of tuck in behind him have a nice draft here and try to move my way forward denny hamlin at this point uh out in control with five laps to go in the stage but the caution is going to come out it looks like it's the 21 of harrison burton here in his sophomore season for wood brothers racing and it gets off to a bit of a rough start in 2023 as well uh as everybody is going to be coming into the pits here for four tires uh, as well as feel you see byron uh elliot bell uh all up there in the top five with chastain behind any hamlin right now we're gonna add a little bit of wedge and a tiny tiny bit of grill tape as well uh, i was noticing as the laps are going on there car getting a little bit loose we gained two positions in the pit line so setting us up nicely for a late stage one dash it's only going to be two laps of scrapping here now denny hamlin in control here in auto club now as we get back underway for the first stage with the final couple of laps now i have a big hole to the inside here i can take if i want it and sure enough down into turn one immediately you're gonna see me hop down here in this top golf blue and white chevrolet camaro now i want to get a couple of of course other paint schemes made but right now this is basically all i have uh there was another 16 made but unfortunately it's not currently on the 2023 mod template so the 2023 mod actually uses a uh, different car model uh than the 2022 mod i'm not sure why uh but it does so that means the templates are also uh, a little bit different uh so yeah i only have one paint scheme right now but i'm gonna work on changing that as quickly as possible because i don't want to use the same paint scheme uh all season long of course here but starting the final lap 
of stage 1P30, honestly. Uh, considering we started last in a four-star car, I, w I was pretty happy uh, with moving up into the 30th position. Denny Hamlin still out in front as we head down this back straight away for the final time we would come through out of turn four. Denny Hamlin, sure enough, he's going to win stage number one here from Model Club, get a playoff point. We're going to be P30 uh, as we cross the line in this number 16. So overall, like I said, pretty happy with the progress that we've made in this first and opening stage here now. We pitted so recently that nobody is going to bother coming into the pits here. So we're going to be restarting from this 30th position on that outside lane, which is not necessarily where I prefer to be. But yeah, that's where we're going to be lined up. Chandler Smith, the last one running, unfortunately. Right now, we'll uh, briefly check the top 10. Three friends racing, Allgaier in 19th place in their debut. Uh, but you see Elliot, Larson, Haley, uh, Byron in the top five. Ty Gibbs up there in the top 10. Chastain faded uh, right at the end of that stage after winning pole position. Uh, he really didn't hang on to that lead for very long. We're back underway for the start of stage two. You got Todd Gilliland in that number 38 front row motorsports uh, Ford Mustang right there in that generator skills car. Let me know down below how much uh, generator skills you guys have. What is generator skills like? What, what kind of skill set comes along with that? Turn it on after you plug it in? That's really all there is to it, isn't it? Uh, nonetheless, we uh, are in lane two through the middle of one and two. Uh, the 47 of Stenos is going to get past us right there. You got fellow rookie behind us, Noah Gregson in the 42. And we are now officially going to be battling Riley Herbst for Rookie of the Year uh, on top of uh, Noah Gregson as well. Uh, and then you, of course, got the 54 of Ty Gibbs. I think, isn't there another rookie uh, that we're battling for Rookie of the Year with? Correct me if I'm wrong. I can't even remember right now. Uh, but nonetheless, Gregson, I think, is the one we're going to be running with a little bit especially in the beginning part of the season here. Now, I am also working on, uh, real quick, this is important to kind of touch on. I'm working on seeing if we can mod the speed of the car that we drive so we can have the R&D aspect with our car. So you can change the speeds uh, and ratings of all the cars in the field, but I've never known if you can actually change the speed of the car you drive. So can I make a four-star car go to a five-star car for colleague racing in the future. So that's something I'm trying to get some clarification on. I'm going to ask some people, uh, and that way we can have an R&D development story here with colleague racing as well. Now, as it looks like four wide with Corey LaJoy, Ryan Priest on the very top, Tyler Reddick, who's just had a bit of a rough start to this race here. Falling down to where I'm running is never a good sign of how your day is going, uh, but Reddick stays clear there in the mid-20s. Priest uh, and Briska, both Stuart Haas racing teammates, and not far in front of them, Almarola. These three, uh, running pretty realistically now. Basically, they suck uh, as we continue uh, through the exit of turn four. Their cars suck, I should clarify. They don't suck. They're pretty uh, superb drivers, unless it's Eric Almarola. Up the inside of the seven of Corey LaJoy, starting lap five. And you can see if you've been paying attention to the track map that Ross Chastain now out in front, but we have been seeing uh, the lead swapped around back and forth quite consistently uh, in the second stage compared to stage one side by side. They're drag racing with the 45. I did have draft partners on since this is a really big track. Uh, so Corey LaJoy was coming in clutch here and working with me, giving me big pushes down the back straightaway, down the front straightaway. That would allow me to get clear of the 45 of Tyler Reddick and lunge one up the inside of the 38 there. Byron now to the lead, but unfortunately I can't complete the pass on the 38. Uh, another thing that was interesting here was the fuel situation. So 13 laps in stage two. If it goes green to the end, because nobody pitted at the end of stage one, we didn't think about that. We are going to be really close on feel because of the fact that we didn't pit at the end of stage one. Chastain back out in front. Now I'm now running me uh, running behind the three of Austin Dillon. And we were just getting a call out that cars were coming into the pit lane this time by. And actually, we got problems up in front of us. What's Logano doing? He's got a, a potential blown engine. We go all the way to the inside. Not the safest escape route there, but it's the one that worked. And him and others into the pits. But Logano with a blown engine right there. That's going to be the end of his day, I reckon. Now we have seen blown engine cars recover and come back into the race within a lap or two, so we'll wait and see at the end of the stage. But up the inside now about Eric Almarola who fought back to my outside. Now the group of cars that just pitted right there, uh, that's about, what, uh, 10 or so cars, and we might see another maybe 10 or so. We would see a handful. We were up to P13 uh, as we were headed down into turn three, uh, approaching this final lap of the stage here now, and that was as far as we would get was P13. Everybody else in front of us had remained on the racetrack, still side by side with the 10, getting a big push from the 14 uh, of Chase Briscoe into turn one. So up into P12, 
Chastain is by staying out and just being in good position here. He's going to lead the way through three and out of four. Down that front straightaway, Chastain will win stage number two here from Auto Club, setting himself up tremendously for stage number three as we head down into turn three, just hoping that 10th place crosses the line so I don't get too much pressure from the 14 or the 10 who are right on my rear bumper and there it is. I don't think that's for 10th place crossing the line. I think we might have had an accident here. Uh, Kurt Busch holds off his 23-11 teammate of Bubba Wallace for the final spot in the top 10. As you see Chastain, Byron, Larson, uh, Hamlin, Truex as well in the top 5. And Truex, after starting at the back, into the top 5. So we're going to pit. Everybody that did pit is going to have to stay out and take a wave around. So we're going to be starting, you know, probably anywhere between 12th to 15th place, depending on the pit stop. Smith and Gilliland, two front row cars, actually come back in, so they will not get their laps back. We gained two spots in the pit lane, so now we've entered the top 10 for the first time in our Cup Series career. We never hit the top 10 in the Daytona 500. Now the question is, the stage 3 is underway. How long do we remain in the top 10? We're about to find out. We're headed down this run straight away alongside the Penske driver in his sophomore season. Austin Sindrick down into turn one. You see Suarez in front of us. He's side by side with uh, Kyle Busch in the 3G uh, number 8 Chevrolet Camaro there for his second start for Richard Childress Racing. How long did I stay in the top 10? It was about, I don't know, 15 seconds? Yeah, Bubba Wallace has passed us uh, and now overthrown us for that 10th position. So down to P11 we go, but we're going to continue to fall down the order. Kurt Busch up the inside in that beautiful 67 car. We have three identical monster energy cars in this field. Kurt Busch in the 67, Tyler Reddick in the 45, and Ty Gibbs in the 54. However, I don't know what it is, but that black base monster car, to me, on all three of them, looks really good on next gen. Monster, I thought, never really looked great when it came to the gen 6. Uh, with just a pure black base car, that was it, that's all that was going on. But on next gen, I don't know what it is. It just genuinely looks fantastic. We continue on, but I was getting swarmed by traffic. But the caution comes out with 14 to go. That saved me from losing like three spots by the time we went down into turn three. Martin Truex Jr. out in front. We're going to pit along with everybody else. I decided not to take tires because our worst tire is at 98%. We take half a can of fuel. That's all we need to get to the end of this race. So everybody's probably going to take half a can of fuel, I would expect. We're going to come in in 14th place. Let's see what happens as Zane Smith picks up the lucky dog. We gain 10 positions. That's not a good sign. Truex, Larson, Byron in front of us, Hamlin, Harvick behind us, but that means that they all took two tires, which this game has been out for, what, three full years? No, it's got to be longer, right? Uh, three or four at this point. And it still appears that I haven't figured out the strategy of NASCAR Heat 5. Uh, at times, it's still, you don't know what in the world uh, is going to do as we head down into turn one. So now we are going to be at a very slight disadvantage, a 2% disadvantage on the right side. Tires is all it's going to be. Hamlin clear on the exit of turn two. Now side by side again with Cindric, who's having an absolutely fantastic day uh, so far here in Auto Club. Can he continue that in these final 10 laps? Bubba Wallace, another driver, having a really good day as well uh, up inside this top 10 for 23-11. Here comes Kyle Busch. Harvick, Chastain behind. Chastain trying to rally his way back forward. It's not been a great day for him after starting on pole position. Here he goes to the outside, splitting me three wide there with Kevin Harvick. Byron is out in front right now as they head down towards turn one. Truex, Hamlin as well. Kyle Larson in the mix. I got Trikos racing on my outside and my on my uh, rear bumper there. Daniel Suarez trying to go around us now, but I'm trying to get back clear of that one of Chastain. Not going to quite happen. We're going to get split three wide by Trikos racing. We're going to see... Uh, uh, of course, Project 91 for track house racing at every road course this season. Some fantasy ones, of course, will happen, but we'll have Shane Van Gisbergen, who just won the Chicago Street Course, which is awesome to see. We'll have Kimi Raikkonen in the car as well. As you can see, myself getting absolutely swarmed by cars here. Now, we got Al Morolli on the inside. The 7 of LaJoy on my bumper. For the first time all day, we are seeing a look at the three friends racing number 30, driven by Justin Allgaier behind us. They're four wide in our rear view mirror. Absolute spectacle here. And Auto Club, Martin Truex Jr. with eight laps to go. Out in front as I try to get clear of the 67. Not going to happen. Now Marola up my inside. I really push a wide on the exit of two. Kozlowski on the outside now. He's going to get clear. Bell on the inside slicing through to the bank bumper. The seven of LaJoy comes as we go down into turn three. Fantastic racing here. Multi-groove racing. Three wide, four wide. You're seeing all of it here in Auto Club. Now, why is this track going away? I will never know. We continue on here now. Four wide again as we head 
it through the tri-oval now. Three friends racing, and while well, I'm racing with three friends, quite literally here, uh, on my inside and outside here, uh, as we continue four wide into turn one. We are absolutely terrible right now. I'm going backwards. That's not the fun part of this, but the racing is absolutely fantastic as we exit turn two, and there you see, down to 22nd place. Here comes my teammate of Justin Haley, our only full-time teammate there in the 31 trying to make a pass now as well. We were, what, fourth place 10 laps ago? Not even 10 laps ago. And now we are down to 23rd. There's still four wide racing in front of us. I absolutely love this, and it was so much fun just being a part of it, and most of all, keeping it clean. If I was on a controller there, that would have been an absolute pile up. They are still four wide. Uh, but they would finally get assorted. Allgaier, moving forward. A great debut uh, for the German racing team now. As you can see, lap 47. Here's Zane Smith to my bank bumper. He got the lucky dog. He was flying up my inside. Uh, and he was going to go up into 23rd place. I was going to go back down to 24th. Now, Truex took the lead and took control. He's here with two laps to go, just hoping that a caution doesn't come out at this point because if it... Well, the caution's out. I am so sorry, uh, Martin Truex Jr., if you lose this race. I don't think he will. Uh, he was looking really good on that restart. All he has to do is hold the bottom and he'll probably be fine, but he's going to have two Hendrick cars of Kyle Larson and Byron ready to pounce. Harvick and Hamlin as well uh, in the top five. Harvick his final Daytona 500 was second place in, well, here in his final season at Auto Club. Uh, looking like he might have an opportunity as well again to go for a win. Will he come up short again? Probably. But we're going to get ready to go back racing. No pit stops here. Uh, Cindric, the last car in the top 10. NASCAR overtime on the way here now as we're on the outside of that number three Richard Childress racing uh, Chevrolet of Austin Dillon the green flag is out NASCAR overtime it's underway here now 24th place can we improve our positions here what was the goal our crew chief said I think it was top 25 if I'm not mistaken so let's see if we can hang on to 25th or better, right, right on the fine line as we head down into turn one. Martin Truex Jr. is in control so far. He's well clear of Kyle Larson. But if you can see up there, he's got that 24 Raptor Chevrolet of William Byron all over his back bumper. We'll see what happens as we head down into turn three. Down to 25th place behind that seven of Corey LaJoy. I'm actually going to get in behind him. I slow down a little bit there just so I can make sure I'm not on the outside into turn three. Uh, Truex still ahead of the 24. I actually got into the back of the seven right there. And that kind of pushed me wide. Up ahead, I can see Byron's to the inside of the number 19 is head down the front straight away. White flag is going to be in the air. We make it back in one attempt in overtime as we usually do with NASCAR Heat 5. McDowell up my inside. I'm using the draft from the 10 to try and get clear of the 34 into turn 1. Byron side by side with Truex and to the lead. William Byron trying to steal the win on an overtime restart. The king of overtime. Byron has been in 2023 in real life. He's about to put that on display in NASCAR Heat 5 as well. Clear of Almarola on the exit of turn 2. It looks like the top uh, 25 goal. Welcome in into reality as we head down into turn three and four for the final time. William Byron has stolen the win from Martin Truex Jr. as he is clear and driving away on the exit of turn four. We're side by side with the seven. It won't be enough there to pull him back. Byron wins in Auto Club. He is going to be locked into the playoffs. The first win for Hendrick Motorsports. We crossed the stripe there for P24. Honestly, pretty happy with that, with the, the caliber of a car that we start out this first season with. Uh, you can see that Harvick restarted fourth, ended up fourth. Larson dropped to fifth. Suarez uh, getting into the top 10. So both the track house cars uh, with the top 10 result. Bubba Wallace uh, down in 22nd at the end. Not a true display of where he ran. Reddick uh, looks like he was one of the drivers that brought out a late yellow. Chandler Smith unfortunately in 37th place. We'll take a look at the points before we wrap things up. Byron in. Herbst in for however long is in the top 30. Uh, we are a ways out, so we got some work to do, but I believe in this team, and I think we can get there. Uh, you see some really quick looks at trucks and Xfinity standings as well. Uh, but overall, that's going to wrap it up for us here today from this Asker Heat 5 next-gen mod for this 2023 career mode. In the next one, it's Las Vegas as well uh, to kick off the middle portion of the West Coast swing. That's going to do it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.